Hello, welcome. My name is Liam Jones, and this is the Open Hand Art Show. Today, what I have for you is a painting that took many hours. It's a portrait of a girl. It's actually number three in a series of five, and they're coming along really well. This one took in between 20 and 30 hours to do, and it was a real workout. Let's get going. <laughs> So, this is what it is. Uh, all this reference material here on the left, and the final product on the right. And uh, yeah, it was, it was a fun project. It was a real learning experience again. Like all this, every single time I do this, I'm always pushing uh, further than what I knew before. Uh, I'm back in Photoshop here out of Clip Studio. Uh, in Photoshop, I came by all these amazing brushes, uh, mostly from the from the, the woman who did the portrait uh, of the, oh, her name is Mandy Jurgens. She's a really gifted, amazing uh, digital artist who specializes in women and portraits of them. And she has a whole collection of brushes that I managed to come by. And um, they're amazing. They're really, really good. So I experiment with those brushes a lot here. And uh, what I'm doing is I'm applying things that I'm learning from uh, artists like Mandy Jurgens and other people like Mel Milton and Cameron Stewart and just all these really kind of awesome contemporary uh, uh, artists and illustrators uh, who I really I like their work you know so I'm looking to them kind of to see what's current and what's happening and I gotta say this digital art stuff it's so so much fun uh, also very difficult to try what I'm doing here is uh, work in the background <laughs> Just experimenting with the brushes, trying to get different feels. I'm really looking for one or two particular brushes that uh, that she used in the background on that portrait there uh, that I really like, but I couldn't find them yet, or, or maybe I'm just not using them right. Uh, they take time to get used to. Like, like with my in real life art, uh, my tools, uh, the digital tools, they really take some getting used to. Um, you know, it takes a while to find your groove. So I started this drawing here with, well, this painting with a drawing. And uh, it was kind of harsh. Uh, the lines are, are harsh and dark. Um, I'm probably not going to do that next time, but um, I just went in and I started painting over all those marks instead of painting over top of them. Um, just to incorporate it all, it seemed to work for me. I see some people do that. I think she did that as well, but only with um, a lighter touch on her line work. I went pretty heavy. Let's see, what can I tell you here? So what I'm doing is taking this portrait uh, of an artist. Her name, uh, her name is escaping me. It's, uh, she's an artist or a, a model from, I think she's in China right now. Anyway, she's a really, she's, I think she's Russian, but in the photo that I have, she has this shocking red hair. She looks kind of like, um, like she's Scottish or Irish or something. So it's kind of, you know, my people. Um, anyway, so I just went with the Scottish feel and, and tried to make the hair as red as possible. And I wanted to get this sense of light. I wanted to experiment with the, the contrasts um, that I see in, in a couple of the different reference materials. You see here that woman up at the top there with light on her face and then uh, um, Jurgen's painting uh, that was so, so good that I, I keep on going back to. Um, I don't want to copy anyone else's work. I just want to do my own. So I roll from a number of references here. She was kind enough to post uh, that process photo on her art station page, Mandy Jurgen's on art station. Highly recommend it. It's a very cool page to visit. Um, tons and tons of artwork. She's got a lot of stuff. Um, so, yeah, she's a solid, 
solid contemporary freelance artist. So what I'm doing here is I'm trying to experiment with uh, the colors that she used. She used a lot of really bright oranges, um, kind of like the translucency of the skin. Um, when the light shines onto the face, it'll shine underneath the skin and come out as you know bright red or orange. Uh, so that's kind of what I'm going for there. And I, uh, I wanted to shot that had a hand in it too. <laughs> that was important to me. I wanted to start bringing in other things other than just faces. Uh, in the future, what I'm going to be doing with these portraits is instead of just doing a portrait as a study, I'm going to try doing some storytelling and bringing in some other aspects and some, um, some really more extreme plays with light and shade, uh, mood, and different things going on. I think I might bring in a bird or put her in a spaceship, something like that. Something, you know, more along the lines of art that I would actually like as opposed to this like this this is just a study uh, for me this isn't the kind of thing that I have on my wall because um, it's, it's like a model shot you know it's like a shot you get of like your daughter or your, your wife you know Sears or something Sears I'm very Canadian eh? so yeah here we go into the hair um, experimenting with that I'm just trying to build the whole thing uh, together at the same time instead of just making one part of it really developed and leave the rest of it undeveloped, I like to work over the whole thing. Uh, I see a lot of artists work kind of in a, in a similar way. It also helps you get out of a funk. If you get into a particular you know, problem area and you get stuck on it, you can lose enthusiasm and um, eventually throw out the artwork. <laughs> you just get stuck. Um, you know, to be honest, I kind of like it at this phase right here that where it's looking really unpolished. I think I tightened it up a little bit too much at the end. Um, again, that's like the artist's curse. When to stop refining everything. Sometimes you have it right earlier in the painting when it's just loose. So it's good to have multiple saves. Noted for future reference. Save as a separate document at various stages of the artwork. Like the lips there, they look a lot softer. Her chin looks softer. Um, I found that when I refined it, it uh, everything got really sharp. Her hand got sharp, her jawline, her lips. Um, yeah, a little bit more than I like. It's a real, it's a real challenge to keep things loose and um, and free. Very difficult thing to do. See, I think if I just threw lashes on it there, I probably would have been better off. Like that's kind of nice. It has an aesthetic to it the way it is. I really liked the way uh, the way in the reference photo she did the eyes. They were so detailed. See, look at that. That is just brilliant. The way she did the eyelashes. She like did them individually, which is kind of against the rules. <laughs> when you're when you're painting girls, you don't draw individual eyelashes, and yet she did, and it worked. It looked great. So I've never done that before. I've always just kind of blocked them in. Um, you know, followed the rules, uh, as they say. So here is like attempt number two with the eyelashes, but I'm too reserved, they're too short. Um, so I eventually go in and I take other reference and uh, make the lashes longer. I really like the way she cast the shadow of the lashes onto the eye and did all the detail and then the translucency on the bottom of the eye as well, which was great. So um, trying to apply that to a different painting, a different angle, a uh, different color of eyes. Uh, it, was, it was a real fun challenge. It was really, really fun and um, rewarding. Hopefully I can carry these lessons on into future artwork, which is really the goal here. The goal isn't to make an awesome painting right now. It's to create the, the better paintings after I've done 100 videos like these. So, um, yeah, that and also... I don't want to stick with just digital painting. I want to get into doing a comic book um, designing. I've been writing a comic book, actually two of them, uh, with a friend of mine. So that's coming down the pike eventually. But uh, I want to make sure that my art is on point and that my skills are better than they are now anyway. I mean, I could probably pull off a comic book now, but I don't think it would be very good. So I want to make sure that um, 
when the time comes, I'm up to the challenge. And if you're going to reference people, might as well do the best of the best. You can't get any better than her, I don't think. I mean, look at that portrait. She is just an incredible digital artist. Like, boom. I think she also does um, World of Warcraft, or she's like an online gamer. Uh, real big. A lot of her streams on YouTube are, are of gaming. Very, very technical. <laughs> and it shows in her artwork. She's very dedicated to her craft. So I'm experimenting with the brushes. I'm trying, like, so much of my time here is spent um, just acclimating to the brushes. And I'm sure, I, I hope, that in the future, in, in future works like even the next one, that I'm going to be a little bit more... Um, that I won't have to spend so much time experimenting on the brushes to, to get the effect that I want. Because here I'm looking for a particular kind of effect and brush stroke, and um, it's eluding me. So I just stopped and went into the hair, did a bunch of stuff in the hair, uh, used some oily brushes, used some dry, dry brush brushes, different kinds of things. Slowly honing in on it. And again, my, my goal in digital painting and in painting in general is to stay as loose as possible with the artwork still looking good and that's as an abstract painter that's that's the goal i mean you let the paint live um, that's modernism and this right here it's um i guess it ended up being more of a study in light color tone value all those things rather than actually making an artwork that would be something I put on my wall and that's fine that's what studies are for uh, sometimes the studies end up being very beautiful and, and artworks in and of themselves uh, maybe maybe someone out there thinks that this will be a great painting uh, personally I, I I would say like it's like Mel Milton says it's a duke you know one in in like hundreds of paintings that I'll have <laughs> eventually if I if I don't die first you know if I paint until the day I die I'm gonna have a whole ton of these ones and um, I'll look back at the days, you know, in 2020 when I just started learning digital portraits and, and cringe. You know, that's the way you want to be, right? You want to get better each time you hit the canvas. Uh, the ultimate compliment someone can says to you is that you're making progress. You know, like, hey, you, you've really gotten better, you know, over the, over the, the last little, little while. So here I am trying to stick with uh, the shadows. And I'm warming up the shadows um, here as much as I can. Uh, the colors were a little bit cooler and brown, and I noticed that what she was doing was using a lot of orange, um, orange and red, in the uh, in the shaded areas. Very warm tones, which was a nice contrast against the blue and green background. So I'm working into the shaded eye now. I'm trying to keep all the values darker. I had the, the uh, eyelashes on a separate layer. Also, a really cool thing that I, I hadn't worked on before was the, uh, the liquify tool, which in Photoshop is just brilliant. Um, I use it all the time here. It's such a time saver. Um, if you watch any of my previous portrait videos, I was always using the lasso tool and then the transformation tool. Um, and then it would leave holes where I have to go in and fill in afterwards. So uh, the liquify tool is so organic, you can just change everything. Um, and it's non-destructive. It's uh, non-destructive in the sense that you don't have to go in and fix it afterwards. It's, it's just when you, know, you do the corrections, you can correct it you know, to, to your eye, to the point where your eye says it looks right. And that's, that's a great thing. over the eye and of course you don't want to do that before the eye is done so you put the hair over uh, when everything is finished and then you put the finishing touches on it use the rotating tool again a beautiful aspect of digital painting where you can flip and rotate everything at will remember back in the day back in the day like Jocko says 
You have to put a mirror behind you and then look at the painting in the mirror to fix your proportion problems or take a photograph of it, wait for the photograph to be developed and then look at the photo and then you'd notice right away all the problems. Whereas nowadays, you can, you can look at it small, flipped, backwards, forwards. You can analyze the values. You can analyze just everything about it an artwork before it can be done. You, I could easily have spent another 10, 20 hours on this if I wanted. But uh, again, it's just a study. I'm not a finished painting. I'm not getting paid for it. Uh, it's just, just to learn how to paint digitally and to get used to these brushes. Here I'm trying to put in some freckles, but I'm kind of at my wit's end at this point. The freckles, uh, they, they weren't coming out right. Uh, the color wasn't right. They were too transparent. See, they're, they're not like, they don't look like freckles. They look like kind of just gray blotches as opposed to freckles which have color in them, kind of similar to the hair color. That just wasn't working. And assign it, and there you go. That's this, uh, this Duke in the books. Thanks for joining me. Have a good one. Bye.